All right, so before I start on actual content on this slide, um, the cardiovascular system and blood are covered in chapters 10 and 11. Um, blood is in chapter 10, the cardiovascular system as a whole is chapter 11 in your textbook. So this is going to be um, a unit that is long. It covers a lot of um, content. It also is kind of physiology heavy, yet again, and kind of difficult for some people. Um, we will dissect hearts during this unit. Um, and I'm going to split these lecture videos up into several different videos so that they're not all one long thing, you know, that's a couple hours long um, because it's a lot of content. So that being said, in general, the cardiovascular system is responsible, su responsible for supplying oxygen and nutrients to our tissues so that they can carry out cellular respiration. So if we think about just cellular respiration in general, we covered this with the muscular system. Um, that we're going to burn sugars in the presence of oxygen in order to generate ATP to power all of our daily activities. And then one of our waste products from that uh, process is carbon dioxide. And then you exhale that, you know, every time you exhale. Um, we're going to, it's also responsible for removing um, urea, creatinine, and then other waste products that we'll get into just as we go through this unit and then some other things that are coming. Urea obviously kind of reads like the urinary system. Um, we've talked about creatine phosphate and creatinine's a waste product of um, muscle contraction when we talked about that last semester. Okay, so then in general, um, some other things. So the heart is located in a region of the thoracic cavity that's known as the mediastinum. So you can see it sitting kind of behind the lungs in that diagram right there. Um, you can see it down here on, I think this is a rat um, in that particular picture. It's not a human. Um, and then, let's see, what's next? So that's, again, that region is called the mediastinum, and it's in the middle of the thoracic cavity. Um, the heart in general, it's a four-chambered organ. It's really muscular. It's about the size of your fist. When you clench your fist, um, it weighs less than a pound. And then it pumps about 6,000 quarts of blood a day, 1,500 gallons. So if you just think of a gallon of milk, most of you don't really think in quarts as much as maybe in gallons. So 1,500 gallons of milk a day are getting pumped by the, um, by the heart. It's cone-shaped, and it's tilted to the left. Um, and so you can see that down here, okay? This apex region, that's the inferior portion of the heart, and that rest on the di rests on the diaphragm. So the diaphragm would run basically kind of where I'm running the pin right there along the um, apex region, okay? That we see right there. Um, typically we say an apex is kind of a point, so you would talk like on a mountain, the top of the mountain is the apex or the pointed region. Um, the other, like the base of the mountain, would be at the ground, and then you're going to hike up the mountain. Um, this region right along here is the base, and we'll talk about that again eventually as well. Um, essentially, adult hearts tend to resemble the shape of your chest once you are finished growing. So somebody who's kind of long and lean and got a long, tall, you know, thoracic cavity, they might have a taller heart than somebody who's shorter and has, um, you know, is kind of short-waisted and short thoracic cavity. So our hearts are going to resemble our body shape. Um, there's something else I was going to say on that slide. If I think of it, I'll come back to it. I can't remember what it was. Okay, so then in general, the coverings of the heart um, this is going to be an organ that's enclosed in a sac that's two layers. Um, the outermost layer is called the fibrous pericardium. It's really tough. It's loose fitting. It's not elastic. Um, and then the serous pericardium, this is the innermost layer, and it's going to fold back upon itself like you see here. And remember back in first semester when we talked about membranes, that serous membranes have a visceral layer and a parietal layer. So the visceral layer is going to adhere to the heart itself, um, and then the parietal layer is going to line the fibrous pericardium. Okay, so if that's the fibrous pericardium being peeled back right there on that diagram, then the parietal pericardium is going to be attached to that. So then when you look over here at the pericardial cavity, that's where serous fluid is going to be located, okay, within that cavity. All right, and so then this right here, okay, this is all myocardium in that diagram. Okay, and so that's the visceral layer that adheres to the heart muscle or the myocardium itself. Serous fluid would be in that blue region, 
and then this is going to be the parietal pericardium layer that's going to attach to the fibrous layer. All right, so then the heart, the heart itself, it has three distinct walls to it. Um, the epicardium, that is the visceral pericardium. So those are one and the same, okay? They're the same tissue. So this is made of connective tissue. It's also going to include um, epithelial tissue. This is where coronary arteries are going to specifically be located, cardiac veins, and then some adipose tissue. And you can actually see the coronary arteries and cardiac veins there in that part of the diagram. This yellow is supposed to be adipose, okay, surrounding those vessels that you see on the surface of the heart there, right? And so that's that um, epicardial layer or visceral pericardium, same layer, right? Then you have, and as far as function, it protects the heart from friction, okay? And remember when we talk about serous membranes and that fluid that's there between the parietal and the visceral layers, that fluid is going to reduce friction in general. Um, then your actual muscle tissue is the myocardium, okay? It's the thickest layer. It's going to actually be what's the working layer as far as pumping blood. And then the innermost layer is called the endocardium, Right, and so that's going to line the myocardium. It's kind of light pink right there. Um, it's made of connective tissue and epithelial tissues. It's really elastic. It's got a stretch as the heart contracts and relaxes. Um, it contains blood vessels and then some structures called Purkinje fibers that we'll talk about um, eventually as well. So this layer is continuous with the linings of the blood vessels, and we'll talk about what that means if that doesn't, you know, make sense eventually. Right, and so then the heart chambers, okay, valves and vessels. So the heart chambers, there's four total chambers. There's two of each type. So the two in the human body, the two superior chambers are the two atria, okay? The, it's an atrium if you're talking about a singular one, okay? They receive blood from the body. The walls are really thin. And then they have these little structures called auricles that look uh, honestly like a little ear, okay, on the outside of the heart. And those auricles are going to allow for additional blood to come into the atrial chambers, okay, so they increase the volume of the atria. Um, and then the ventricles, these are the two inferior chambers. They're going to be your pumping chambers. They're going to pump blood back to the body, really thick wall of myocardium, okay, or of muscle tissue. Um, the left ventricle is more muscular than the right because it's going to pump blood to the body, okay? The right ventricle is going to only pump blood to the lungs, right? So it has to pump a short distance where the left ventricle does a whole lot more work in the grand scheme of things. Then, and so those are your two ventricles in that diagram. It's not a fabulous diagram. It's kind of small. Um, and then these are the two atria. This region right here, that's what's listed next here. That's the septum. So the septum separates the chambers on the left side of the heart from the chambers that are on the right side of the heart. And that's to keep oxygenated and deoxygenated blood separate from each other. All right, so the next, the valves, okay? So you're gonna have, um, again, two atria, the two top chambers, and the two ventricles, the two bottom chambers. Um, actually, let me skip this to this to just a second. So that's a little bit bigger diagram. Okay, so there's a the heart located within the mediastinum, just a different section where you can see where it's sitting within the mediastinum, um, just a um, horizontal or transverse section okay, where you can see the heart there. Here's the vertebral column, so this is the anterior side of the body. Here's the two ventricles, here's the two atria. Okay, There's the septum, thick wall of myocardium compared to a thin wall of muscle or myocardium up here in the atria because they're receiving blood the ventricles are pumping blood. All right, so then back up to here, right? So blood's going to come into the heart, into an atrium on either the left or the right side, depending on where it's coming back from. Once it's in the atria, okay, on either side of the body, then it's going to have to go through a valve. So the first two valves we're going to talk about here, these are the atrioventricular valves, meaning that they separate the atria from the ventricles. The valve's job in general is to ensure that there's just one way flow of blood, okay? So once blood goes through the atria into the ventricles, when the ventricles contract, that's going to close the AV valves, right? 
you've got two different valves on um, the right side of the heart. The tricuspid valve separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. And then on the left side of the heart, the bicuspid or mitral valve, so two terms interchangeable. This separates the left um, atrium from the left ventricle. So to remember which one's which, this little phrase, if you try it and it's right, okay, for the tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart, then by what's left for the bicuspid valve on the left side of the heart. All right, and as far as what those cusps mean, those are the little flaps. So if you look down here, you can see three little flaps on the tricuspid on the right side of the heart, and then two little flaps on the left side of the heart for the bicuspid valve. Okay, and then you can see the three cusps on that actual heart. This is sectioned um, at the base region, okay, so that you can actually see those valves, and then there's only two cusps there. So then you've also got what are called semilunar valves. So the semilunar valves, as it says here, they separate the ventricles from the major arteries. I'll talk about what it means by major arteries in just a second. Um, each of these has three cusps, okay? So then when the ventricles contract, these semilunar valves are gonna open and blood's gonna go from the ventricles into either the pulmonary trunk or into the aorta, okay? So the pulmonary valve is gonna separate the right ventricle from the pulmonary trunk, all right? And that's a specific artery. And then the aortic valve is gonna separate the left ventricle from the aorta, all right? And so these valves, these are gonna prevent backflow of blood into the ventricles once that blood gets into one of those two vessels. All right, so when we just look at this diagram real quickly here, okay? So this is the tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart. This is the bicuspid valve on the left side of the heart, okay? This is the pulmonary valve. This right here, it's kind of harder to see, that's the aortic valve, okay? So again, you try it and it's right, then you buy what's left, okay? Um, that being said, this section, this is a frontal or a coronal section through the heart where we're looking at um, the posterior section, okay, the anterior part is gone in this particular diagram. This is an external view of the anterior side of the heart. Um, if you have any questions about this section of notes, let me know.